Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So sit back and enjoy. The great secret wisdom of the Egyptians finally revealed. Stolen Legacy by George G. M. James The Education of the Egyptian priests in A. The Seven Liberal Arts B. Secret Systems of Languages and Mathematical Symbolism C. Magic A. The Education of the Egyptian Priest in the Seven Liberal Arts Their education included the seven liberal arts, the Egyptian priest. The ancient Egyptian priest class were trained in the liberal arts. Liberal arts education, also known as the liberal arts and pure sciences is the traditional academic course of study in Western higher education. Liberal arts takes the term art in the sense of a learned skill or academic skill rather than specifically the fine arts. Liberal arts education can refer to studies in a College of Arts and Sciences degree program, a liberal arts college, or more generally, in its broadest sense, it can refer to education at a university, college, or community college. Such a course of study has a heavy emphasis on humanities, arts, and pure science forms of the natural sciences, formal sciences, and social sciences. Contrasted by courses of study that emphasizes vocational education or technical education over the aforementioned or in some cases contrasted with those that have a sole emphasis in professional development, applied sciences, or religion-based courses. Although professional development, applied sciences, and religious studies education can go hand in hand with liberal arts education, none of which are mutually exclusive where a course of study can share elements of both liberal arts and professional development education. The seven liberal arts. The term liberal arts for an educational curriculum dates back to classical antiquity in the West, but has changed its meaning considerably, mostly expanding it. The seven subjects in the ancient and medieval meaning came to be divided into the trivium of rhetoric, grammar, and logic, and the quadrivium of astronomy, often more astrology, 
mathematics, geometry, and music. A liberal arts education is known to bring about research and transferable skills in its students and practitioners. The Trivium 1. Rhetoric 2. Grammar 3. Logic The Quadrivium 4. Astronomy 5. Mathematics 6. Geometry 7. Music Before they became known by their Latin variations, Arts Liberales, Septum Arts Liberales, Studia Liberella, the liberal arts were the continuation of ancient Greek methods of inquiry that began with a desire for a universal understanding. Pythagoras argued that there was a mathematical and geometrical harmony to the cosmos or the universe. His followers linked the four arts of astronomy, mathematics, geometry, and music into one area of study to form the disciplines of the medieval quadrivium. In the 4th century BC Athens, the government of the polis or city-state respected the ability of rhetoric or public speaking above almost everything else. Eventually, rhetoric, grammar, and dialectic or logic became the educational program of the trivium. Together, they came to be known as the seven liberal arts. Originally, these subjects or skills were held by classical antiquity to be essential for a free person, liberalis, worthy of a free person, to inquire in order to take an active part in civic life. Something that included, among other things, participating in public debate, defending oneself in court, serving on juries, and participating in military service. The trivium in classical education is a set of three phases comprised of the grammar, logic, and rhetoric stages in which children first learn knowledge, then understanding, and finally wisdom. The trivium part of the seven liberal arts was first used in antiquity and then adapted to suit medieval Christian times. What is the trivium and classical education? Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. True learning mastery, grammar, knowledge, logic, understanding, rhetoric, wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 5 through 7. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting get understanding. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 5 through 7. Trivium 
the trivium is the lower division of the seven liberal arts and comprises grammar, logic, and rhetoric. Grammar, logic, and rhetoric were essential to a classical education as explained in Plato's dialogues. The three subjects together were denoted by the word trivium during the Middle Ages. But the tradition of first learning those three subjects was established in ancient Greece, Plato's Dialogues. Etymology, Trivium, the place where three roads meet. The subjects of the trivium are the foundation for the quadrivium, the upper division of the medieval education in the liberal arts, which consists of arithmetic, numbers as abstract concepts, geometry, numbers in space, music, numbers in time, and astronomy, numbers in space and time. Educationally, the trivium and the quadrivium imparted to the student the severin liberal arts of classical antiquity. Grammar teaches the mechanics of language to the student. Logic, also dialectic, is the mechanics of thought and of analysis. Rhetoric is the application of language in order to instruct and to persuade the listener and the reader. It is the knowledge or grammar now understood or logic and being transmitted outward as wisdom rhetoric. Classical liberals arts education of antiquity. George G. M. James Stolen Legacy Greek philosophy is stolen Egyptian philosophy. Greek philosophy was the offspring of the Egyptian mystery system. A. The Greek concept of the atom was erroneous. The Greeks derived the meaning of the word atom from one alpha. A negative prefix meaning not and timnian, the present infinitive active of timno to cut. The two derivatives together meaning that which cannot be cut. For centuries, the world has been misled by this misconception of the Greeks. A fact which no doubt had impeded the progress of atomic research by Western scholars who had believed in the so-called Greek origin of philosophy or primitive science. George G. M. James believed that the ancient Greeks set back scientific technological education back by proposing that the atom was uncuttable. He knew that the ancient Egyptians were educated in the existence of subatomic particles. The atom could be split. George G. M. James further writes, Today, however, the Greek 
conception of the atom is no longer tenable since modern science has successfully split or cut the atom. Subatomic particle. In physics, a subatomic particle is a particle smaller than an atom. According to the standard model of particle physics, a subatomic particle can be either a composite particle, which is composed of other particles. For example, a proton, neutron, or meson, or an elementary particle, which is not composed of other particles, for example, an electron, photon, or muron. Particle physics and nuclear physics study these particles and how they interact. In the last video, a picture or drawing of the ancient Egyptian goddess Nu, who was a personification of subatomic particles, was drawn with wave-like patterns on her body because these particles exhibit wave-like properties. A composite particle, a proton, is made up is made of two up quark and one down quark, which quarks, which are elementary particles. Subatomic particles, the atom could be cut or broken down into a nucleus. The nucleus can be broken down to the proton which contained quarks so atoms can be cut atoms was misnamed by the Greeks uncuttable when you cut an atom you have subatomic particles or sub below the atom particles The atom. An atom is a particle that consists of a nucleus of protons and neutrons surrounded by a cloud of electrons. The atom is the basic particle of the chemical elements. And the chemical elements are distinguished from each other by the number of protons that are in their atoms. History of atomic theory and philosophy. Atomism or atomism. The basic idea that matter is made up of tiny indivisible particles is an old idea that appeared in many ancient in many ancient cultures not just the Egyptians the word atom is derived from the ancient Greek word atomos which means uncuttable George G M James Stolen Legacy Menphite or the city of Memphis in Egypt Menphite theology opens great possibilities for modern scientific research the Memphite theology was the creation story of the ancient Egyptians the ancient Egyptians had their own book of Genesis. The scholars call this story the Menphite 
Theology. Shabaka Stone. The Shabaka Stone, sometimes Shabako, is a relic incised or cut with an ancient Egyptian religious text which dates from the 25th dynasty of Egypt. In latter years, the stone was likely used as a millstone, which damaged the hieroglyphs. This damage is accompanied by other intentional defacements, leaving the hieroglyphic inscription in poor condition. Historical Origins Originally erected as a lasting monument at the Great Temple of Ptah in Memphis, in the late 8th century BCE, the stone was at some point removed, for unknown reasons, to Alexandria, Egypt. From there, it was transported by a naval vessel from Alexandria, Egypt to England. Shabaka Stone Content The text includes two main divisions with a short introduction and an ending summary. The first division relates the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt. Ptah works through Horus to accomplish this unification. The other is a creation myth, the Memphite theology or Memphite drama that establishes Ptah as the creator of all things, including gods. The gods of the Egyptians were forces of nature or things like the atom, the planets, and the stars. They were personifications for certain natural phenomena. The Shambhaka Stone The Shambhaka Stone has the creation story of the ancient Egyptians. The Memphite theology or the creation story of the ancient Egyptian. The literal and the figurative meaning behind the story. Zero, the Big Bang. That's what the Egyptians call Zeptepi. One, hot and dense state of rapid expansion. The Egyptians call this the goddess Nun. Two, energy converted into subatomic particles, quarks and electrons. The ancient Egyptians called this the primordial mound or Ptah or primordial lotus. Number three, atoms and light elements begin to form. The Egyptians call this atom or atom. Number four, suns, stars, and galaxies begin to form. The ancient Egyptians call the sun Ra or atom ray. Number five, planets and life begin to form. The ancient Egyptians call the planets and Ned. These were the Egyptians' names for the planets. The literal and figurative meaning of the ancient Egyptian gods and cosmology. The ancient Egyptians worshipped the creature rather than the creator. Stage 
three, atoms and light elements begin to form. Atum. Atum was the name that the Egyptians gave the atom. Memphite theology is science. The ancient Egyptian god Atum was the personification of the atom. Stage three, the atom. Atum, atom. Stolen Legacy by George G. M. James. The identity between the Egyptian sun god Atum or Atom and the atom of modern science. There are two things which I desire to point out in connection with the relationship between Atum or Atom, the Egyptian sun god, and the atom of modern science. These things are one, the similarity of attributes and the similarity of names. The Egyptian god Atum or Adam means self-created everything and nothing. A combination of positive and negative principles. Below the atom exist subatomic particles or beneath a tomb was Pata and Nun. These so-called gods were personifications of subatomic particles, quarks and electrons. Subatomic particles, the atom, atom, subatomic particles, quarks, pata, and none. These are scientific concepts because the ancient Egyptians had a liberal education. George G. M. James, Stolen Legacy. The Memphite theology is the basis of all important doctrines in Greek philosophy, history, and description. The Memphite theology is an inscription on a stone now kept in the British Museum. It contains the theological, cosmological, and philosophical views of the Egyptians. It has already been referred to in my treatment of Plato's doctrines. Dr. George G. M. James believe, or Professor George G. M. James believe, Plato received his education from the Egyptians and his philosophical point of view is the Memphite theology. But it must be repeated here to show its full importance as the basis of the entire field of Greek philosophy. The stone is dated to 700 BC and bears the name of an Egyptian pharaoh, Shabaka. The Memphite theology records the scientific world view of the ancient Egyptians. It was a basis for all important doctrines in Greek philosophy, including Plato. Stolen Legacy James was the author of the widely circulated Stolen 
legacy. The Greeks were not the authors of Greek philosophy, but the people of North Africa, commonly called the Egyptians. Also known as stolen legacy, Greek philosophy is stolen Egyptian philosophy, first published in 1954. In this book, James claims that among other things, the ancient Greeks were not the original authors of Greek philosophy, which he argues was mainly based on ideas and concepts that were borrowed without acknowledgement or indeed stolen from the ancient Egyptians. He argues that Alexander the Great invaded Egypt and captured the royal library at Alexandria and plundered it. That Aristotle's ideas came from those stolen books and that he established his school within the library. The book draws on the writings of Freemasonry to support its claims that the Greco-Roman mysteries originate from an Egyptian mystery system. Although, as historians point out, James does not cite these sources accurately. James invoke ancient Greek sources such as Herodotus, who describe the cultural debt of Greece to Egypt. He also mentions prominent Greek philosophers such as Pythagoras and Plato, who are said to have studied in Egypt. He attributes Democritus use of the term atom, indivisible particle, to the Egyptian deity, Atum, who symbolizes completeness and indivisibility. George G. M. James An Investigation into the Death of Professor George G. M. James A couple of months back, I read a blog that raised questions about the death of Professor George G. M. James, author of the controversial work of history, Stolen Legacy. The writer of the blog implied that shortly after the publication of Stolen Legacy, James had died under mysterious, perhaps even violent, circumstances.